just passing through video. It's about 70 degrees here in South Texas. It is March 20th, 2024 as of recording this. I try to keep most of the commentary to a minimum so it can just truly be a just passing through video. But I'll try to at least highlight when we switch from, like now we're currently in FAR, getting ready to go to Edinburgh, Texas. We'll loop back around and get to McAllen. I'll try to at least make those verbal notes.
just here on the left hand side is Aguilar's Meat Market. It's a family owned business here in the Rio Grande Valley. And I used to, when we lived in our house, I used to stop by the other one that was on our, my way home quite frequently. Really great meat counter, super clean, really good prices. I will sometimes stop at this particular one that we just passed on my way home from campus. with those old vertical movie sign like movie theater signs just across the street on our left hand side is a historical museum it's the uh, Museum of South Texas history admittedly there is not a lot in downtown Edinburgh I believe they are working with the university to try to build up a few more buildings and businesses within the downtown location. It would be, you know, great if there was some sort of, you know, how a lot of university campuses have, you know, a campus corner where the university tends to be um, the pulse of the community in a good way, right? and there's a little bit more vibrancy going on. I know they've had a lot of discussions about those types of things between the university and the city of Edinburgh. So hopefully as they continue to have those discussions, some more of those things that might attract students to stay a little closer to campus, maybe those things can come to fruition. She has a harness um, with a seatbelt. She 
just gets excited for car rides. As we pass over these railroad tracks, we essentially leave the downtown Edinburgh area and cross over into the university. The university specifically being the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, UTRGV. Specifically, obviously, the Edinburgh campus. UTRGV has multiple campuses, all the way from some activity going on in the city of Laredo about two to three hours, maybe closer to three, maybe three and a half hours to the west of us. But then they have campuses here. There's a McAllen teaching site, Edinburgh, Laredo. Uh, there's a Harlingen campus, a Brownsville campus. There's a Coastal Studies Lab. I'm probably forgetting a couple. But they have academic buildings and campuses all throughout the upper and lower valley here in the Rio Grande Valley.
just to have fresh protein to make with dinner so it you know and the prices were so reasonable and it was right on my way home I could just stop when I was I knew I was gonna make some sort of vegetable for dinner uh, but depending upon the vegetable I could choose a protein you know and just uh, get protein for a few days and then stop a few days later sold our house that used to be out this way and I don't quite get to stop at that one as often but the good news is there are plenty of Aguilar's meat markets in the valley if we were to go straight through this light we would hit McAllen. We're gonna hit McAllen as we turn uh, left here and go, go travel south. But after McAllen, if we were to travel straight, we would start to get into like the Palm View area and the road would curve around and it would eventually connect up with a road that would take us out towards Rio Grande City, uh, you know, so further west. But for our drive today, we're just gonna do kind of a big square. We started out at the, uh, in Far, Texas, kind of near the Far Natatorium. And just gonna do a big square today. over this road we do pass into the McAllen city limit I'll try to remember to put the populations of each of these cities um, as we're driving through them just for some context but uh, I believe I believe around 140 to 145,000 residents within the city of McAllen I'll have to double check for Edinburgh I feel like that is below 80,000 but I'm not totally sure so I'll have to do some some checking on that This road, 10th Street, is very familiar to me as well from when I, again, our, our house previously was further west from the light that we just turned at. 10th Street is kind of a popular street within uh, the, the city of McAllen. There's a lot here. It's kind of a longer street that runs north and south. There's a fair amount of business activity.
moved back to South Texas, I didn't know that Khan's Home Plus stores were still in business. This one is, just here on our right. And even in just the time that we've been living here, this section on our right has been built up a little bit more than what it was when, even when we just bought the house in 2018. And we actually sold in May of 2023. But the camera might pick it up, but there's still some construction going on um, here on the right-hand side. So this section is is really you know still being built up. You know, on our left-hand side, there are all kinds of stores. Um, I forget, it's called like Trenton Crossing or something like that, but uh, or North Crossing, something along those lines. Several restaurants. Several stores. There's a Sam's up here on the on the right also, but just really one of the sections of town where there's a little you know a little bit more uh, in terms of chain restaurant type of food options that tends to be on this road as opposed to some of those uh, at least what I prefer some of those I prefer those mom and pop type of places. But the chain restaurants are, are pretty popular on this particular road. I don't know if the camera can quite make it out, but it might just over here, HEB on the left-hand side. Uh, that is, HEB is, the, is a Texas grocery chain. If you're familiar with HEB, then you know kind of the, the goodness that is with HEB. It's a pretty great store. They do have some pretty, pretty great pricing. And they, you know, they give back to Texans in a lot of ways too, just in terms of donations and a lot of things. You know, sometimes on campus, we're able to work with them for donations for events and they're usually pretty welcoming. But that one's apparently called the Gucci HEB because it has things that some of the other local HEBs do not in terms of different types of ingredients. But even just driving down this road on the left-hand side, you know, things like Hot Yoga Studio, Fork to Fit Kitchen, uh, there, there are gonna be a couple of nicer restaurants. There's like Oak, like Oak and Barrel uh, Restaurant and Bar. There are gonna be some, a couple of local things, like a local name, but it is still gonna be an awful lot of chain restaurants and such. favorite bike stores here on the right hand side breakaway cycles we like going in there one of the places that Bella might even recognize right here on our right hand side um, this is the North 10th Street Animal Hospital they are so great they're so good with our dog Bella Just feel super fortunate to have found them
We just passed an Arabic cuisine. I've been meaning to try it. We turned off of the off of University Drive when we turned left when I had indicated that if we were to go straight through that light we would be going west and you know eventually link up with roads that would take us to Rio Grande City but when we turned left there that would probably be considered North McAllen McAllen kind of stretches a ways it'll stretch down not quite all all the way to the city of Hildago which is very literally right on the border uh, on the back of I guess the the south side of town in Hildago you can see border patrol crossing I guess this would kind of still be mid getting ready to go from mid to south McAllen There's obviously a whole lot of streets that are running parallel to us, um, you know, both on the, the east and the west side of this street. There are additional roads, obviously, that are running north and south, but North 10th Street, uh, maybe I don't think it would be incorrect to kind of call it the spine, so the center, uh, at least from the north south road, with a lot of other roads kind of stretching to the east and to the west. Probably a few more roads stretching to the west of us because if we stretch to the east, then we start to butt up against a little bit of um, Edinburgh as well as, uh, especially as we get to South McAllen, we start to butt up against uh, Far Texas, P H A R R. If I can remember, I'll try to overlay a map. Several towns, like, or cities, I guess, small cities, bordering each other. I think that kind of signifies an awful lot of the growth of just in terms of population uh, within the Rio Grande Valley. I haven't really lived here long enough to be able to fully comment on infrastructure growth.
for some local businesses to truly thrive. I know the pandemic didn't necessarily help. If you guys can see in the video here on the right hand side, those string lights, there used to be, it looks like it's a, uh, like a restaurant right now, but it used to be a uh, like in-house brewery. And I think they struggled even before COVID hit and just couldn't make it through the pandemic. Even pre-COVID though, I recall seeing a lot of mom and pop type of places try to pop up, but struggle even pre-pandemic. You know, pre center up here on our left hand side Feldman's is a great store it's like a great party store if you have a gathering or you're there's some finer foods I think they even have um, uh, they used to I feel like they used to have a gourmet deli I don't feel like they have a gourmet deli anymore I feel like that was one of the things that left but they have a like a cigar humidor in there um, but then they'll have some fine food. So if you're having a you know a dinner at home or something, and or you're going to someone's house for dinner, that was always a great place to pop in to get something to take to dinner if you're going somewhere, you know something like that. But yeah, I mean even just post pandemic, certain things struggling a bit. see a couple of food trucks here on our right I won't lie um, some of the best Mexican food I've had in the valley has come from a couple of different food trucks and for sure those mom-and-pop type of restaurants everything else is a little bit of Tex-Mex and not always as authentic in in my opinion but I really kind of like some of the best food that I've had or is that some of these, uh, you know, small businesses, you know, food taco trucks. We are going to turn here. I want to try to drive through, you know, what I, what I guess might be a little bit more historic uh, downtown McAllen. So we're going to drive over this way to get to that. But on our right, you'll see more of a food truck park. I th you know, they do, they do like live music in there and it really, to my understanding, really thrived during COVID uh, when people were wanting to eat outside, you know, but still get out. And there's a Diego's Farm to Table food truck in there. I follow them on Instagram and I've had it once. It was really very good. I'm really glad some of those things kind of made it through the pandemic. the turn I really wanted to do so we may need to turn around
of McAllen. There is, and if you're not in the know, then you're not in the know. And I'm not in the know just yet, but man, I want to be. There's a taco place that is a. It's it's been highlighted on some YouTube channels. I, I have. To, I'll try to look up the name, but. I really want to find it and I really want to go you know several local places have just raved about it uh, just kind of being really true uh, truly great places uh, to, to go get tacos but uh, seen El Rey here on the left hand side uh, where we're at passing here um, I, I think they do an awful lot of concerts there but you know formally uh, uh, you know uh, movie theater and it's you know turned into a place where they can have musical performances a few more food trucks down here places called like the yard um, a lot more local eateries kind of randomly throughout we have um, I'm trying to see if I can't grab it with my phone get some murals being painted over there the city will come by and you know sometimes you get local artists that kind of, that want to come and want to do an install some of those types of things also there was one not long after um, Ch uh, Chadwick Boseman passed away uh, the actor and somebody did a pretty great mural of him i don't think it's up anymore but I, i'm pretty sure i took a picture of it on one of my instagram posts so i can probably find it and try to share it and overlap but it was a pretty great one kind of appreciate those types of things definitely need to look and do some more research for the name of that little um, family run probably been, I think it's been there for almost a hundred years uh, a taco place just you wouldn't know it was a taco place unless you knew it was a taco place It's US 83. And if we follow this, it'll take us back to complete our our square, essentially, uh, back towards uh, far Texas, far as in P-H-A-R-R. -R. There's definitely a little bit of an older school vibe to a lot of places in South McAllen, historic downtown, older McAllen. A lot of it has some charm you know there are some older homes and some older neighborhoods that and some of those older homes and neighbor neighborhoods have been really well maintained and are, are really great neighborhoods to live in there are of course some areas that could just like anywhere else could be brought back up a little bit but there's just there's an there's a fair amount here and just a smaller section of, of what I guess would consider older downtown. And we're not all the way to quite uh, all the way South McAllen yet. Uh, probably if we were to turn right on back up here on 10th Street, 
um, and travel for 10 minutes, we would be getting close to the Reynosa Bridge to cross over into Mexico. So if we were to turn here, like I said, we would probably, it would, you know, it's not that far away to, to get to the, uh, to the actual border and you can get a little further into South McAllen. I do believe I have a Hildago city or city of Hildago, uh, just passing through video on the YouTube channel. Probably link that in the description or somewhere within the, uh, the end credits of this video. Check that out. I think I, I do in that video drive right along the border wall. Oh, there is an outdoor kitchen store. I'm going to have to go in there at some point for sure. I don't know if the camera picked that up, but it looks like it's a newish type of store. Lots of interesting outdoor kitchens, like legit outdoor kitchens built on your back patio. That was one of the things we loved so much about our home was we had a great backyard space. And had we had that been the home that we were going to choose to be in, you know, forever, we would have we would have gone kind of all out and built the outdoor kitchen, but we had a pretty good good setup with a nice smoker and a couple of, you know, good grills and the backyard pool and some palm trees. It was a little bit hard to sell that house and to sell that space. I don't regret it by any means. I appreciate what that house provided for us in the five years that we lived there. I appreciated what it provides us with in terms of opportunity from selling that house and the return on investment. It's going to help us get to securing our retirement property and retirement dreams sooner rather than later. So it wasn't hard to sell, but on occasion I do miss particularly the backyard space. But I also happen to really like living RV life right now also. the It still feels like vacation glamping every day when I get home. And I knew I would love it. I didn't know for how long I would love it or honestly how much I would love it or the amount of stress that just seemed to go away when you didn't have to deal with the house projects. There are still some RV projects from time to time, absolutely. And it's not completely stress-free, but it's just not anywhere near as stressful as it could have been owning a house and keeping up with all of those things. And this is also a little less permanent, which to some might be a frustration. At this point, in our life, at this point in my life in particular, it's a welcome sight. That will about do it for this video though. I appreciate you driving along with us. I invite you to check out some other videos. Hit the like and subscribe. All those kinds of good things. And until next time, be sure to live life outside of the work that you do.